of, my, <laughs> of this club. Um, he's also a past president. He's the auditor of District, 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 District 75. And he's going to render a speech entitled Ninoy Aquino's Arrival Speech. I'm, I'm also a fan of his blog. I, 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 I read his blog if mm -hmm. I have a chance to do it. Let us all welcome to, uh, to give his advanced speech number five, past president Jake Duran. Just a background, I chose this material because when I was in high school, our teacher forced us to memorize portions of this of this arrival speech. That's why I owe that to the nearby this one. But I'm not really familiar with the material, with the whole material, because when Ina Yakino died, I was barely one year old. So I did the research last night, and here it goes. So more than three decades ago, Senator Benito Nina Yakino Jr. planned a homecoming despite threats in his life. He was allowed to go to the U.S. to undergo a surgery for his black arteries. But after learning that the situation back in the Philippines was getting worse, he decided to come home. On August 21, 1983, I was not one year old then. Aquino <laughs> finally arrived in the Philippines. So after stepping off the plane, he was immediately arrested and while waiting for his prison escort, Nino Aquino, the man who declared Filipinos are worth dying for, was assassinated in broad daylight. This is for the benefit of Julian and Juni. The rest, as they say, is history. But unknown to many, Aquino was armed with this speech when he came home. Of course, it was undelivered, and I will try to interpret this for you. Uh, I, I hope that my version would be far better, right? So here it goes. I have returned on my free will to join the ranks of those struggling to restore our rights and freedoms through non-violence. I seek no confrontation. I only pray and will strive for a genuine national reconciliation founded on justice. I am prepared for the worst and have decided against the advice of my mother, my spiritual advisor, many of my tested friends, and few of my most valued political mentors. A death sentence awaits me. Two more subversion charges, both calling for death penalties, have been filed since I left three years ago and are now pending with the courts. I could have opted for political asylum in America, but I feel that it is my duty, as it is the duty of every Filipino, to suffer with his people, especially in time of crisis. I never sought, nor have I been given assurances or promise of leniency by the regime. I return voluntarily, armed only with a clear conscience, and fortified in the faith that in the end, justice will emerge triumphant. According to Gandhi, the willing sacrifice of the innocent is the most powerful answer to the insolent tyranny that has yet been conceived by God and man. Three years ago, when I left, I hoped and prayed that the rights and freedoms of our people would soon be restored, that living conditions would improve, and that bloodletting would stop. Rather than move forward, we have moved backward. The killings have increased. The economy has taken a turn for the worse. And the human rights situation has deteriorated. During the Marshall period, the Supreme Court heard petitions for habeas corpus. It is most ironic, after martial law has been lifted, allegedly been lifted, that the Supreme Court last April ruled that 
it can no longer entertain petitions for habeas corpus for persons detained under a presidential commitment order, which covers all so-called national security cases and which under present circumstances can cover almost anything. The country is far advanced in her times of troubles, economic, social, political problems bedeviled the Filipino. These problems may be surmounted if we are united. But we can be united only if all the rights and freedoms enjoyed before September 21, 1972 are fully restored. The Filipino asks for nothing more, but surely will accept nothing less than all the rights and freedoms guaranteed by the 1935 Constitution, the most sacred legacies from our founding fathers. Yes, the Filipino is patient, but there is a limit to his patience. Must we wait until that patience snaps? The nationwide rebellion is escalating and threatens to explode into a bloody revolution. There is a growing cadre of young Filipinos who have finally came to realize that freedom is never granted. It is taken. Must we relieve the agonies in the bloodletting of the past that brought forth our republic? Or can we sit down as brothers and sisters and discuss our differences with reason and good will? I have often wondered how many disputes could have been settled easily had the disputants only dare to define their terms. So, as to leave no reason for misunderstanding, let me share my terms. Firstly, six years ago, I was <coughs> sentenced to die before a firing squad by a military tribunal whose jurisdiction I refuse to recognize. It is now time for the regime to decide. Order my immediate execution or set me free. <clears throat> Secondly, national reconciliation and unity can be achieved, but only with justice, including justice for our Muslim and Ifugao brothers. There can be no deal with a dictator, no compromise with dictatorship. Thirdly, in a revolution, there can be really no victors, only victims. We do not have to destroy in order to build. Fourthly, subversion stems from economic, social, and political causes and will not be solved by purely military solutions. It can be curbed, not with ever-increasing repression, but with a more equitable distribution of wealth, more democracy, and more freedom. And finally, for the economy to get going once again, the working man must be given his just and rightful share of his labor. Into the owners and to the managers must be restored the hope that where, is there, where, that where there is so much uncertainty, 
if there's no despair. On one of the long corridors of Harvard University are carved in granite the words of Archibald McClash. How shall freedom be defended? By arms? When it is attacked by arms? By truth? When it is attacked by lies? By democratic faith? When it is attacked by authoritarian dogma? Always and in the final act, by determination and faith, I return from exile and to an uncertain future with only determination and faith to offer. Faith in our people and faith in God.